Okay, sorry for the inconvenience. So, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Wojciech Mazur. I'm a Scala Turing engineer uh, here in the Virtus Lab. And actually, I'm a part of the Scala free compiler team, uh, where we like uh, try to make this uh, amazing language even better and to make it bug free, for example. Uh, but besides that, I'm also the maintainer of the Scala Native. That was the project I was involved for quite a long time. Uh, for example, I was uh, helping the Scala Center uh, with uh, development of that. And uh, today we are going to talk about WebAssembly, as you, as you know. And especially the three main parts, basically what is WebAssembly, because uh, sometimes it might be a bit misunderstood what it actu actually is. Okay, uh, the second part would be basically how to actually uh, build the WebAssembly modules. And the last one would be a brief uh, summary of the current support for targeting WebAssembly with Scala. So we, we don't have much time, so without any further uh, hesitation, let's begin. So the very first thing, uh, what is WebAssembly? It definitely is a hype. It's a very trendy term that is basically everywhere, uh, and people just think that it would be amazing if all we would agree on this one simple format. Uh, is it completely true? I don't know, maybe, for some use cases, definitely. But let's take a look how it actually looks under the hood. So uh, WebAssembly, is actually, even though the name suggests something different, uh, it is actually an, an, another form of the bytecode, similarly to the JVM, which probably most of you are using. So, uh, because it's a bytecode, uh, it needs some kind of interpreter. It needs its virtual machine. So, we have, all, again, a, a, another form of uh, this kind of interpreter, WebAssembly inter virtual machines, which can interpret it, and uh, optionally, they can also optimize it and compile just in time for the machine code to make it faster. And actually, a lot of uh, languages are already capable of that, doing that. So the main language here is basically Rust, which is the main platform here. But even like other languages, uh, for example, of course, C and C++, C Sharp, uh, recently even Haskell, and the Kotlin, Kotlin Native, uh, with its new initiative. So how about Java and Scala? Uh, we will talk about it in a second, and I will show you some, some examples. I mean, we won't, wouldn't have uh, some live coding, but this will be a bit more like a, a bit high level stuff. So, in general, uh, if we would sum, sum up the WebAssembly to, to JVM, it's very similar uh, because we have this intermediate representation, which is then interpreted. However, uh, since it is very similar, then why should we even go for the WebAssembly? So, here, like, a few distinct features, but let's start with the first one, which is uh, portable, portable runtimes. So WebAssembly, as the name suggests, was initially developed for the web, so execution in the browsers. Later, uh, WebAssembly moved, was moved out of the browsers and could run it on JavaScript-based runtimes, like Node.js and the Dino, for example. However, they thought that it would be even more amazing if you could move, run it completely standalone on the bare metal machine via one of the uh, native runtimes. Uh, it has some caveats for, for that. Uh, and basically, each of these runtimes has its own way of communicating with, with the host. So for the web, you have some special web API, which can, or in the uh, JavaScript-based uh, runtimes, which allow you, for example, to manipulate the, uh, I mean, sorry, they don't allow you to, to manipulate the DOM, so you cannot, from assembly, uh, build your website, but you can implement logic for that. Similarly, uh, in the node, they have like a JavaScript-based APIs, which allow you to uh, run your code using, uh, with some help from the JavaScript uh, runtime. But when it comes to the last one, the native one, we don't have any kind of support. We run it almost on the bare metal, and because of that, we need some way of communicating with the system on which we're running. So because of that, there was introduced the WebAssembly system interface, which is a bit uh, something similar to Apple 6. It's a modular way of uh, defining these um, common interfaces that can be used by the WebAssembly to execution of the host. Uh, why it's actually that important? I mean, uh, WebAssembly is well, well known from its design, which 
uh, because it was going to be run on the web, in the browsers, on your client, cl client's machine, basically, it needed to be very secure. You didn't, you are not able, or you shouldn't be able, to introduce any malware this way, for example, or some crit critical vulner vulnerabilities. Yeah, hard word. So, because of that, uh, WebAssembly runtimes are denied by default. What it means, for example, if you want to execute it, and for example, get access to a files, or to a file system in general, by default, it's not possible. So, you need to have the explicit access from your host on the runtime to access these uh, files, these resources. Similarly, uh, access to sockets, for example. You cannot just start, open some socket and start sending data. Instead, you need to pre-open it and pass it to the runtime. Uh, it depends a bit from the, uh, from the runtime which we are uh, running, because uh, on the web and in the Node.js, there is uh, no separate for socket at all. We can use web sockets, however. Uh, but in these uh, standalone runtimes, you can actually um, access them in some way. So by default, a very was module, so this small application or the fragment of the code, is by default only getting the access to its uh, linear memory which, uh, for, on which it can perform some, some work. But and later, if it gets some resources, uh, the capability to run this resource or to use it can be passed down to some sub-modules, some or uh, sub-functions, uh, whatever. So you probably think, okay, that's nice, but probably there is some cost with that. Yes, there is a cost. So in general, uh, here on the charts, there are basically a uh, few uh, results of the benchmarks running from the same Rust uh, source code, uh, but they are running on different runtimes. So the first one, of course, is the native Rust compiled directly. Then we have like Rust running on the node, I mean, compiled to WebAssembly and running in the node, and onto um, standalone run runtimes, which are uh, Wasm Edge and Wasm Time. And the very obvious thing is that the performance is very depending from the runtime and very, very depending from the actual problem we're trying to solve. There always is some kind of overhead, uh, but typically it's around two to three times slower, but of course it very depends. And if we would compare it with JavaScript, uh, it also can really depend. So in some browsers, it can be like 10% uh, speed up. In some other use cases, it might be even 10 times the speed up. Uh, so it very depends. So it probably is an area that needs w way more uh, testing and checking on that. Uh, so now, if you are know a bit about the WebAssembly, let's go to the uh, second part, because we know what it might a bit bring us, especially the security with passing capabilities. But the next step is how to actually build it. Before we would go to the actual Scala and building, targeting uh, WebAssembly from Scala, let's see how it's done in the other languages. So the Rust, as I said, is the, uh, this uh, main language for uh, Rust. It has, uh, I think, most of the tooling built around it, all these like uh, binding generators, some uh, runtimes that are created in Rust for the WebAssembly, etc. And it, ac it actually has a built-in support for uh, targeted WebAssembly. All you need to do is to like add this custom target, which is like this uh, WASM32, unknown, unknown. That's a target triple that will be later passed to the LLVM compiler. It would inform it that you are actually going to produce uh, WebAssembly and not the machine, uh, machine code for your uh, current system. So, uh, as I said, uh, under the hood, run, uh, ra Rust is using LLVM, so it compiles its source code uh, to this common LLVM uh, intermediate representation, which is later compiled and can output multiple different uh, assemblies, machine codes, it depends. I mean, like x86 uh, or MIPS, and there's WebAssembly, which is not directly a uh, um, machine code, but it's some kind of output. And the same approach is done in, uh, in other uh, languages. So they are a bit like a front-end. I uh, just parse the, your code, provide some capabilities, some, some features, and they output the LVM. So like Haskell, C++, 
Also, it is done in Kotlin and Scala native. So that would be important. We will come back to this later. The second biggest language for the Rust is C++. Uh, they don't have built-in support for Rust. However, they have a very good third-party tooling for that. And one of them is Mscripten. Mscripten is actually dedicated for creating um, Node.js, I mean, the JavaScript uh, supported and browser uh, WASM modules. Uh, so it's, it's mostly dedicated for the web, in summary. And to make it work, basically, all you need to do is to replace your um, default compiler, which is, for example, for the, for the LVM, it's Clang, CLang, uh, with their own uh, fork of it somehow. I mean, it's uh, the uh, EMCC is their own C compiler, which is actually built on top of uh, LLVM compiler, but has some additional capabilities. And what's very important, it comes with their own uh, standard library uh, implementation dedicated for the execution on the web. So it's some, some kind of support from the JavaScript runtimes. So again, I would not go uh, how it's actually done, but you basically just need to use this other compiler. However, we spoke that uh, the Encrypten was targeting the web and Node.js uh, environments, but we have this third uh, option, which are these native standalone runtimes. Uh, which are using WASI, so WebAssembly System Interface. And they actually uh, cannot use this help from the JavaScript, and they need to have this, again, direct access to the system. And they come with a set of this, again, uh, C library, um, standard library re-implementation, and some tooling, again, with some custom uh, compiler, which also can be just swapped, swapped, uh, swapped instead of the default one. And you just need to uh, tweak it, which is quite easy. Uh, and here's like example how it is done. So let's go to Scala. So in terms of Scala, you probably would think that the obvious choice might be uh, Graal, Graal native image. I mean, it already can produce uh, native ex executables, right? Uh, unfortunately not. I mean, Graal uh, and Native Image has support for WebAssembly, but not from the point of the producer of the WebAssembly, but as a consumer. Uh, at least currently, uh, Graal can be this virtual machine for running WASM. So we can embed some WASM module, uh, but you cannot produce it. However, there are some other solutions. And uh, I think the, the, the most popular one is this small project called TVM. Uh, that was actually a project that was uh, initially allowing you to compile your, your Java code and produce C or JavaScript. Later, they've added the WebAssembly and WebAssembly via VASI. There are a few others, but uh, I think this one is the easiest to start with. And we have a Scala native, the thing I'm working with, uh, and it also should be comp comp uh, capable of compiling to WASM. But let's start with the first one. So as I said, there are the TVM, for example, is trying to analyze your bytecode. So it is not language agnostic. So it can use uh, Java, uh, Scala, Kotlin um, produced bytecode. It can try to, to uh, optimize it, pass it to its own intermediate representation, and emits uh, almost directly a web assembly module in, in a binary format. I have to admit that the first time I was using that, it was, I was very amazed because it just worked. Uh, and it has some very nice feature, features, like, for example, it has support, somehow support for translating threads to coroutines, which can be then easily executed um, uh, in the WASM or in the JavaScript. Uh, but also it has like a, it's way more mature, mature project, uh, it has already some uh, kind of support for bindings, for uh, mem memory area lo allocation. Uh, it's actually supported by, uh, by uh, this uh, most popular build tools like Maven, Gradle, and uh, IntelliJ, because some people are using IntelliJ as a build tool and don't bother what's under, uh, what's under the hood. And basically, all you need to do is to just add this uh, TVM plugin to a project and it basically runs. So here we're just adding the Scala free library as a dependency. Uh, this plugin itself, it will and we just configure the main class for which it should compile the code. 
We can run Gradle generate WASI, and it produces some kind of WebAssembly, which, can, which we can then run. So here, a bit lower, I'm using the WASM time, so one of these runtimes, uh, standalone runtimes, to run it. And, it. and in case of this, some kind of benchmark for motherboard benchmark, uh, it kind of executed somehow. We will compare it a bit later to other solutions. And this other solution would be Scala Native. So, as I said, uh, Scala Native already uses this toolchain tool chain of LLVM. We already provide LLVM IR, um, which can be then compared to many different target architectures. The only thing that, that was missing was the support for WebAssembly. So one day I thought that, hey, let's try it. And within like an eight hours, not days, hours, I was able to uh, make some first uh, proof of concept, uh, because in, in the way there was a few problems, I needed to actually understand a bit the WebAssembly, how it works, how it's distributed, and these uh, other tool chains that are used. Uh, because under the hood, we are using the, again, uh, LLVM compiler. You could just swap it out with the mscripten or WASD SDK that we used in the C++ examples. Uh, and it kind of worked for simple examples. Uh, however, I found uh, many problems uh, uh, with that at the current stage, which are not yet fixed, but they would be in the future, hopefully. <laughs> uh, so what the problems was the fact that uh, there was no exception handling in the WASI. So when you're running in this JavaScript supported environment, you could, we could reuse JavaScript um, exception handling, which is still uh, zero cost exception handling. But in, case of, in terms of WASI, it is not yet there. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of proposals from, for the uh, WASI and WebAssembly in general to introduce exception handling, but it's not there. I mean, the zero cost uh, exception handling, which is very important. Because, for, for example, this previous project I showed you, the TVM, actually uh, emulates it some way, but it actually has some kind of uh, small overhead. Uh, so it's not perfect, but it works. It makes its job. And both of the solutions currently, I think, are, they are not yet uh, uh, supporting the native WebAssembly garbage collector, but hopefully it will be a uh, change in the future. And when it came to Scala Native, uh, here you can see like a bit uh, modified native config. So native config is the thing that we do to, to uh, to configure the Scala Native builds. So uh, here we'll be basically just passing some custom um, tool chain that you should, should use, uh, different target repo, like in the Rust example. Uh, we use this a bit different LVM tool chain, like the CP Plus example, and uh, it kind of works, produces some output. And the output here, I mean, you compiled here the same source code for this motherboard benchmark, and again, it worked, uh, although it was a bit, uh, a bit slower. Not very much, 200 milliseconds on a five seconds uh, long benchmark. So that, that's not perfect, but it's okay, I would say. Uh, so I come up with idea that let's make something more difficult. So here's the actual the example with cuts effects, uh, where we're just starting a bunch of um, runners, some tasks, which are at some point just uh, terminated. Mm, and it kind of works. And actually, it also, so in here it was working on the, uh, standalone, the standalone runtime. And here it is actually running the web because mscripten uh, provides us with this nice, uh, nice, um, simple HTML pages on which we can just uh, test our solution and debug it a bit. And um, so you probably think, okay, show me the money, show me the performance. And again, uh, it's not very, I mean, uh, again, we can compare the same, same sources, this one compared to Scala, but again, again, uh, different runtimes and uh, execution of the JVM. The first very slide is the thing that probably is bothering most of the pop people with JVM, so the cold and slow start. Uh, so, the first basically 300 milliseconds in this case on my machine was basically wasted just to start the JVM and to make it work. In case of a native program, it was like 
just a 10 milliseconds to ju just start it, and with uh, usage of these uh, WebAssembly modules, it was maybe just uh, twice as long. But, it, but within this very short period, uh, like in the case of this uh, benchmark a, a bit lower with JSON parsing, that's the time enough that we need to time times uh, parse some big JSON file and send it over, to, over the internet somewhere. Uh, so for example, that maybe a, might be a very good use case for serverless, some lambdas, and whatever. Uh, I mean, I'm not working too much with commercial projects, but probably you know better where, where, it, where it could be actually be used. And however, in the last uh, in the last slide, you can see that there is no result for the TVM. Uh, is it a, is it a, a, my mistake? No. Uh, that's why we actually get to the next point, which are the problems of the current solutions. So uh, the fact that there was no result was because uh, the program did not compile. Uh, both scale native and these Java based, uh, bytecode based uh, solutions need to re implement Java standard, sta Java standard library and use only uh, friendly, let's call it, uh, subset of our languages. So, for example, usage of reflection is very hard or impossible for the hard of time compilation. Of course, we know that it's possible, but like in the case of native image, but you need to have this big configuration for that and it's not very pleasant. But in fact, the um, original JavaScript library is very entangled with the, um, with the JVM itself. So it might use some very intrinsic stuff to make uh, it work, some glue code, which might not be very portable in some cases, uh, or it can contain stuff that is not yet supported in general by the WebAssembly and its standard or the WebAssembly system interface. Uh, because of that, some stuff like, for example, file system, working with file systems or with sockets uh, might need some re-implementation re or, or creating some other implementation for that, for, for this general usage that we are typically, um, typically um, using. Yeah. Uh, the last problem is basically the, the, the fact that the debugging and tooling uh, that we are uh, using right now in the JVVM-based solutions is totally different. Uh, I mean, uh, some tools and debuggers exist, but you wouldn't be able to just uh, plug, it, plug them into your IntelliJ or VS Code and make them work, because it's a bit different. It's the machine code, or it is interpreted in this very new, different uh, virtual machine. But of course, probably with the time, it would uh, be a bit better. So let's address the big elephant in the room. Is Scala well ready for WebAssembly? Uh, probably you know that it depends. <laughs> I mean, it can be ready for some simple stuff, but not for like this uh, production usage. Right now, I strongly believe that maybe if you would, uh, we will see uh, in IR, this might be very, very different. Um, but we will see. I don't want to give some false hopes. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at why, how this future of WebAssembly actually might look like. So because uh, we had these examples where we had this very quick startup and kind of low memory usage, we might, we might be very tempted to make, use it for any kind of services that need to be uh, scaled rapidly or started very quickly, so serverless or some small microservices. However, currently, uh, there would be a problem with that because the ecosystem might not be ready, uh, but of course, that might change in the future. Uh, basically, the microservices, serverless, serverless is the main area for the Scala right now, probably. There is Scala.js for the web. And in fact, maybe in the future, it might be a bit, um, a bit um, a bit, we can make some kind of hybrids between the two. I mean, we can, for example, use Scala.js for this DOM manipulation, uh, but for example, leave the WebAssembly for the fast business logic or some, if you need some um, heavy numerical uh, computations, maybe machine learning, because there are proposals that are adding the machine learning to the WebAssembly in general, then maybe that would be a case. Um, in fact, the .NET is making a quite, quite a good job here. They have this uh, framework, called, framework called Blazor, which actually is able to uh, currently um, make some good usage 
of the WebAssembly in these single page applications. Uh, other thing I could think of is basically some simple CLI, uh, CLI apps, uh, because we can ship them all together via WebAssembly Package Manager and run it anywhere when we just have a runtime for the WebAssembly. So it can be really portable and maybe it can be better than the stuff you have with the JVM, especially since it's way more lightweight. Uh, but where do we, where this color needs to actually catch up with this, both of these solutions? So the first step is actually the, the tooling for that. To interact with WASI, with this other stuff, we need some dedicated um, bindings, for example. And actually, uh, there is some work in progress for that. Uh, for the TVM, I think it is ready. For this client, I have started to yesterday, basically, uh, to add some, some uh, some support for generating actual bindings from the uh, common format that is used by the WebAssembly to, to represent some common interfaces of the types. But there are other, other areas that need a lot of uh, love, I would say. So especially debugging and efficient and fast tool chains, which can uh, build efficiently this was module. I mean, if you have used this kind native, it works but it can be slow and it can be resources hungry, but I hope it will change in the future. And uh, the ecosystem, I mean, uh, we need probably more of these WASM friendly libraries. Maybe we might need to come up with our a bit different, uh, maybe, set of tools to, for interacting with the system, uh, maybe in a more async way, because uh, JVM and most of the basic stuff is typically uh, synchronous. And uh, we probably would need some, this a bit tighter integration with the mo WASM modules um, because uh, WebAssembly was designed to be composed from these little fragments uh, which we can easily combine together and work, to, uh, and, work and they can just be imported and, or export some stuff. Uh, but um, that I think that's not yet there. Uh, however, all the stuff was the things that we know today. But there are things that might actually be uh, a small evolution or a small revolution in some areas, especially because the WebAssembly is by default secure. Uh, it can be used to run this untrusted code in production environments uh, because this WASM module would not have access to resources. Um, the WebAssembly format ensures that both the caller and the callee have exactly the same signature, so it's a bit harder to uh, make some viola violations of, the, of your program. It might be a, a bit uh, more secure. In general, WebAssembly was designed to be secure and to be fast on the web, so it's also very light and easy to parse and work with. Uh, however, for some other areas, maybe we might come up with some uh, some universal uh, ways of integrating all tools, because uh, since um, the portability of WebAssembly web might be tempted to, tempted to actually create some way of creating universal plugins, or we can replace the old CABI that we used, for example, for the JNI uh, in Java or Scala, anywhere, just to communicate with these C libraries. Uh, because this format is uh, the WebAssembly interface types are way uh, more secure, stable. They don't contain macro definitions, which are very harmful, in my opinion. So it's way easier to, to work with uh, and make stuff a much more stable. Uh, when it comes to my talk, it's coming to the end. Uh, I just want to remind you about our the Scala office uh, that my team is holding just next to the entrance to this room. And now, we and now the Pavel Marks and Shimon Rajevs are wait waiting for you uh, and your questions. Um, and tomorrow we will be hosting also a special guest, which is the Martin Oderski himself. So uh, don't forget about it. And I think that's all from my side uh, that I wanted to share with you. And I'm waiting for, the, for your questions because I think we have a bit of my time, uh, of your time. And you can also catch me uh, on our stand uh, where I can also more of your questions. So are there any questions? In the meantime, I will say thank you for that. I loved the pace of the presentation. Thank you. 
Uh, hi, thanks for the talk. I'm wondering if you did any measurements on the file sizes, because we have a constraint yeah. that our target exp uh, environment expects the file to be not more than 2 MB. Yes. So we like using Scala is a no-go. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Scala native flavor, do you have an idea how much the file size was? Yeah, uh, so it depends. Uh, so uh, for uh, some brief comparison, uh, this uh, some very simple Mandelbrot benchmark when uh, packed to the jar was uh, around one megabyte or, or, or two, something between that. Uh, the WebAssembly module produced by the TVM, which is very efficient and mature for that purpose, and was uh, targeting the JavaScript or the web for the long time, is very well optimized. And I think it was uh, only around 100, 120 kilobytes. In case of Scala Native, uh, it was around 800 kilobytes. Uh, it's not terrible, but it is quite heavy. But I hope that it will be improved in the future. Uh, but you know, there's only limited amount, amount of resources. Uh, <laughs> and I can take a, talk uh, more about that. But in general, I hope that this uh, answers your question about the size of the produced web assembly modules. Yeah? All right. Anybody else? We kind of can use some time. Okay, we have a question up there, Krzysiek. Can you, yeah. Thank you for the talk. Uh, regarding the um, potential blockers, uh, what you said, what is obvious regarding the Scala native, uh, like uh, limited access to uh, the uh, standard libraries, uh, Scala Java and third party mm -hmm. libraries. But regarding the TVM, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, it's the, the same, right? Yeah, that's exactly the same problem. Uh, as I said, we both need to re implement, for example, this just in that library, but parts of that might be used in some other areas. Uh, so this example, that was for, for example, using the cuts effect, uh, was, I think, under the hood, when using the JVM artifacts, uh, so the ones com cross-compiled for the JVM, were missing about 32 different classes or methods that were not implemented nor not, or not present. Uh, when I switched that to this cross-compiled version for the Scala native, because cuts effect is also cross-compiled for Scala native, and uses a bit different impl implementation, then this number dropped to only five, but it still did com didn't compile. Uh, but in general, that's a very big problem in general. Uh, m so uh, as soon as some libraries, some ecosystems are adding support for this kind of native, uh, it might be a bit easier. Or when some contributors uh, try to help, for example, this project like TVM also to implement stuff. Uh, however, right now, this code base is a bit different. I mean, like, uh, there's a news. Uh, this kind of is actually like starting to support uh, Scala multi-threading. So our implementation, for example, of uh, concurrent stuff is there. In the TVM, it's still targeting mostly uh, synchronous code, I mean, uh, single-threaded code. Even though in the future, the WebAssembly is going to introduce uh, the actual threads, uh, but in general, this um, code that is produced for these web passenger modules typically needs to be cross-compiled anyway. We are not, unfortunately, the um, JVM ecosystem is not very friendly for that. We have, I mean, it was solved by the bytecode, this common binary format, but when it comes to comp cross-compilation and using different ecosystems, it's still a bit problematic. But I guess we don't have time to talk about this one. Uh, but also, again, uh, hope it answers your questions. 